Donna Brazil has worked in just about every presidential campaign since 1976. She was campaign manager for Al Gore. You remember that one? Gore wins the popular <laughs> vote but loses the election in the Electoral College. Uh, Supreme Court had to weigh in on that. Sound familiar? Donna Brazil has been chair of the Democratic Party a couple of times. Uh, it's in the last tenure uh, that produced her controversial book, Hacks. Donna, I've known you for a long time. Nice oh, seeing you again. I've known you for several decades. How are book sales going? Uh, it's a bestseller, uh, both the Washington Post and New York Times. Uh, my friend say, says that it's dripping with hot sauce. It's a great read. I urge your readers and your listeners and everybody watching tonight to get a copy. It's a great Christmas gift. Nice plug. And we're going to get to the book in a minute. You know we're going to start in Alabama. You tell me you were not surprised by the results. Honestly, you really really thought that Roy Moore was going to lose. You know, I went down to Alabama a few weeks ago. I had an opportunity to go to the uh, campus of Auburn University. I saw millennials. I saw African Americans. I saw housewives coming up saying, guess what? I'm supporting Doug Jones. And I kept saying, why? Because you know what? They were sick and tired of Roy Moore. I think Donald Trump did great damage to Roy Moore when he endorsed him, when he embraced him, because the country is, is, is saying at this time, enough is enough. Women deserve to be heard, they deserve to be believed, and the fact that Roy Moore was once banned from the Gatson Mall, I know where Gatson City, Alabama is, that was a sign to me that Doug Jones had a chance. This was a referendum on Roy Moore. Absolutely, Roy Moore and Donald Trump. Okay, so, so my question then, be, well, let, let me get to the second question. African Americans taking a lot of credit here. African American women in particular are saying they deliver this. How so? Their numbers aren't that large in Alabama, are they? One out of three voters. One out of three voters okay, was an African American. That's a big number. Ninety-six percent of black women gave their support to uh, Doug Jones. This was a, a referendum on the the type of leadership that that black women have seen, not just in the White House, but also in the state of Alabama. They sent a clear message to Roy Moore that he should not be in the United States Senate. A person banned. Doug Jones uh, prosecuted uh, the murders of four little black girls in that Alabama church. He deserved to be elected. He's a man. He's a decent man. Uh, someone who will honor women. And here's what people know about Doug Jones. He will put kitchen table issues first, and he will work to try to bridge all of these political divides here in Washington, D.C. What, what about the white vote, the white conservative vote that uh, uh, Roy Moore was counting on? Uh, did they not turn out? Uh, did, did they stay at home? Uh, did they, was it that small percentage that wrote in names? Was that the un, uh, undoing of this guy? No, look, last year, Donald Trump won Alabama, Alabama by 28%. This year, Doug Jones beat Roy Moore by 2%. This was clearly a, a campaign that energized young people. We saw more people turn out. That's what happened. More people turn out to vote for the Democrats and cross over. And that's why Doug Jones is now senator-elect. You know, some Repu Republicans breathe in a sigh of relief here in Washington. They're glad he lost. Because, I saw that. Be, be, because they, they figure that takes that issue of, 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 of pedophilia and that sort of thing off the table. No. They also figure they'll come back and win that seat back, you know, when we have the next election. H how do you respond to that? Uh, the tide is turning. Look, my home state of Louisiana has a Democratic governor. We know that we have a Democratic governor in Virginia. I think it's a new day in the South. I'm looking forward next year of going down to Tennessee, going down to Georgia, and maybe we can flip a few more states, Bruce. You just said the tide is turning. Did you mean to say that? Is that yours or did you steal that? No, I, I haven't stole anything recently, but I, the tide is turning because I've, the country wants change, and they don't want the kind of change that Donald Trump is talking what about. What you got in Alabama, you can duplicate that in the South, in these Southern states. Just a few weeks ago, we, uh, the Democratic Party flipped three seats in Oklahoma. I mean, Oklahoma is also a red state, so okay. there, there's hope. I want, I want to get to your book. Have you talked to Hillary Clinton? Uh, have you guys mended fences? Have you made up? You know, I support Hillary Clinton. I supported her campaign in the general election. I went over to be chair of the Democratic Party, not the chair of the Hillary Clinton campaign. So I, I take it you haven't talked. No, I haven't talked to her, but I haven't talked to a lot of people in the last couple of weeks. I've been up at Harvard teaching and, and doing a fellowship. Okay, the book. Um, any regrets? Anything you said in there? I, 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 I think there were words like fixed, rigged. Uh, anything you want to take back? Any of those words? Are you standing by that. That's just the way it is. This is your story. Bruce, I became chair for the second time in my adult life because the Democratic National Committee was hacked. The Russians sowed discord. They tried to discredit our nominee, Hillary Clinton, and they tried to destroy our democracy. That's why I wrote this book. Uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign, writing the check, bailing out the DNC with yes. much needed funds. Uh, does that constitute a fix in your mind, uh, rigging the nomination or... 
When I was Al Gore's campaign manager, and in return they they wanted control over what what was well, being done. Well, of course they they wanted control, but that prevented me as chair of the party from doing my job. My job was to help get out the vote for all of the Democrats running, not just the presidential ticket. But look, here's the thing: in 2000, when I became Al Gore's campaign manager, I stepped aside as co-chair of the Rules and Bylaws Committee so that then Bill Bradley would not have a criticism. This time, the Clinton campaign took over the funding app apparatus before she secured the nomination. Look, that's not. That's not illegal. It's not unethical. It was just totally wrong to do that at the time. Gotcha. Help me understand, uh, before I wrap here, where the Democratic Party goes now. If you had to come up with your own list, uh, I mean, how many people would be on your list for possible presidential, vice presidential uh, candidates? 2018 is a huge year for Democrats. We have a gubernatorial race here in, the, in Maryland in this region. We have 33 gubernatorial races across the country. And we have to defend uh, all of our red state Democrats. So next year is a big year. We come out of the wilderness in 2018, and we're ready to compete in 2020. I don't have a candidate yet, but I can tell you, we're going. you're going to see a lot of new faces and new blood within the Democratic Party. Okay, do you think uh, uh, these potential candidates, I know they're out there working because you oh, gotta yeah. get out there early. Uh, do you think they'll be calling you up? I wanna hold your book up here yeah. too, so, so people can see it. Do you think they'll be calling you up? Or, and I'm just gonna put it uh, uh, bluntly, because I know all of us have our time in the sun. Uh, have these young people moved on past you? Have they moved on past Hillary, Bill, even Barack? Well, you know, it, it's not about a name. It's about getting more young people to run for office. I've been involved in the Democratic Party since the age of nine. I love my party. I love my country. I now want to prevent our country from being hacked from future, uh, from future uh, Tampa from foreign governments. Have you, a, have, you seen, have you seen collusion as yet with what's been rolled out there? The Trump administration says no collusion thus far. I can't find anybody who says, yeah, there, there is collusion. Possibly obstruction of justice. That's still to be decided, but you haven't seen collusion yet. I, I saw the Russians interfere in our election in real time. I saw the fingerprints of people involved in trying to steal this election for Donald Trump. I hope the investigators get to the bottom of it so that we can clean up our democracy and prepare for 2018. Okay, for people who don't know, you know, you live here. You're local. I, I am. I've known you, you know, since way before Eleanor's first campaign for a, a D.C. delegate. What, what are your plans? I know you're up at Harvard. Uh, well, what else are you doing? I'm back at Georgetown next semester. Teaching Georgetown, okay. I, I've been at Georgetown for the last 14 years. Uh, I'm still actively involved in D.C. politics. I talk to Eleanor all the time. I'm excited to be back home. Uh, it's time to get my Christmas tree and, and get into the, the holiday spirit. Getting some rest, vacation? Uh, I need some. I'm, I'm going to my favorite tropical destination on the planet. So uh, it's the 50th state, and I love it. All right. Don't forget to update Always you. a blessing. Thank you. And don't forget to update your cell phone number with me before you leave. Oh. Don't let her out of here. I'll give me her cell phone number. We're back in a minute. Thank you, Bruce.